the draft of the resettlement and rehabilitation policy does not address the homeless population nor does it talk about the lack of proper housing for lower income groups or about the large section of people living in rented accommodation in the urban spaces in short it does not address the urban housing crisis and nor is that the intention of the policy why is that the case why is the government bringing out a policy while more pressing issues of urban housing are not addressed see uh, this is one of the major flaw with this draft policy itself uh, it is very clear that it is only talking about encroachers non title holders uh, who are living in the objectionable land it is not talking about payment dollars it is not talking about homeless people so that's why i said that the policy is not concerned about people who are homeless that they have to find new houses they have to build a house it's 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 not really on that note the policy is very clear they are interested in evicting people so this policy has nothing to do with uh, the homeless people and moreover this policy has nothing to do with housing in chennai or housing in tamil nadu this policy is kind of a stand alone policy in itself uh, so the, there is a huge housing crisis in uh, uh, tamil nadu and i think a huge housing crisis is all over india but if you look at the data of the latest housing survey from nssco we can see that around like uh, uh, 55 percentage of the urban dwellers in tamil nadu is living in rented households that's like more than 50 percentage of the population and if you look at some of the major cities like chennai i think that the number will be around 60 percentage and 70 percentage and most of the people are living in uh, uh, houses with uh, has only one room which means that they just have living room they don't have any other room so the housing crisis in tamil nadu is huge and tamil nadu is also one of the most i think that tamil nadu is the most urbanized state in uh, india uh, the very census number gives you 55% but if you go beyond that i think it will be around 60% or so so the housing crisis is quite huge in tamil nadu but this policy has nothing to do with it this policy is very clear it is only about evicting people and we should ask the question why that is the case why are you not talking about homeless people why are you not talking about the housing crisis why are you just interested in evicting people so then we have to, then we have to look at it from a kind of a global context uh, because uh, now uh, particularly after the neoliberalism and uh, after india opening up its economy the competition to attract foreign capital is quite huge and the competition is not between indian cities and indonesian cities and indian cities and other developing country cities no the competition is also between between the cities within india this competition between chennai and bangalore this competition between chennai and hyderabad of course three these three cities like andhra and the states andhra pradesh uh, then andhra pradesh now telangana um, and andhra and uh, bangalore and uh, chennai they are in huge competition to attract foreign capital there are certain kind of capital which only comes to south india they don't go to uh, north india except uh, delhi or mumbai for some reason so then you have to show your city something that is like singapore something that is like new york right every time when a politician comes and says that say singara chennai 2.0 we want to make our city like singapore the question that needs to be asked is why should chennai look like singapore why can chennai be like chennai why it should look like singapore what is the point of it right uh, it is not just about infrastructure it is about uh, giving a cosmopolitan character to your city and showing that this city can be something like your first world city it will have all the facilities like first world city and and people just forget that the first world cities are cities for the rich in the first world cities you go to new york you see people who are living in pavement homeless people are because that's how the city is constructed and that is the case with most of the first world cities so the idea here is also the same so and also the idea is not about evicting these people from the land uh, it's not about just resettlement it's basically evicting a certain kind of poverty in the inner city right you are not just evicting those people you are evicting the entire character that that city is built with so you are evicting them so that uh, the in the inner city poverty won't be visible and the poverty is now visible in one particular section see the, the kind the idea of ghetto is not there in chennai if you look at indian cities we cannot say this is a ghetto 
except one or two uh, places like daravi and which is a huge slum settlement uh, particularly if you look at cities like chennai we have slum settlements but they are small slum settlements you have 2000 households you have 3000 households next to a Uh, next to a posh area right so when it is like that when it is mixed the public infrastructure you cannot alienate the poor from that whatever that the public infrastructure is enjoyed by the rich is also enjoyed by the poor because spatially you cannot do uh, you cannot alienate uh, that and uh, that's costly too but now what has happened you have evicted the poor and uh, consolidated them in one particular space See, Kannagi Nagar has thirty thousand households. Means how many slums that you have evicted? Uh, Perumbaka has thirty thousand households. Means how many? So you have evicted slum population within the city and packed them in one place. See, that's why you can have a DLF right next to Perumbaka, and Perumbaka is completely different from DLF because the public services can be also different because it's thirty thousand households. This economic so scale that kicks in. So public services can be given differently to Perumbakkam and uh, DLF. So this is the problem, and this problem is not addressed in this uh, draft policy. So, uh, so one reason, uh, one thing is that mention the size of the settlement. Let the settlement not be thirty thousand settlement. Let the settlement be two thousand. Let it be small. Because once you have thirty thousand households, there is a kind of uh, 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 a social stigma that is attached to it. That is primarily because of the size, right? uh so if we if you do not have 30000 households you will not have such social stigma that is attached to these uh, uh, resettlement colonies and there are probably we can discuss this further there are multiple other problems that is there in this policy uh, that is not helpful for the uh, slum dwellers within chennai or in tamil nadu